Hello, uh, Threadheads. I like it. I like that it did it. That that intro, the intro. Like it, like. Maybe not hello though. That seemed a little weird. What's up? What's going on, Threadheads? <laughs> no. You know, it always interests me. People who want to go to the club on like Thanksgiving night so or Easter night or Christmas night. Like, what y'all doing tonight? Nigga, today was Christmas. What do you mean? Well, <laughs> like, I did. I did hear some statistics about like one of the biggest drinking days being the day before Thanksgiving, day before Christmas, just because you know we were lucky enough. We're we're still in our hometown, but a lot of people right. are misplaced. They may have had family that passed, so to them, it's just like a like a turn up thing. You know. Well, the night before, yeah. I You're get talking it. About Thanksgiving I'm night. talking about the night of. Because ni- niggas be nigging and there be party flyers for Thanksgiving <laughs> night clubs. Be and it'd like, be like a girl like dressed as a turkey, but her titties is out. It's I, like, who's in this mood? But first off, I'm like, how are you not tired? After all that food? Yeah. Because I, I know dumps a lot of on. transplants or whatever, and they'll mm-hmm. come and get some food, take it back. You know, right. they eat too. But what you do know? you do at night night? You know, some people Mm -hmm. eat during the day. I'm a one thing a day person. Like if I (laughs) go do something like that's my thing for the day. I can't people be stacking like let's go to brunch and then let's go to this day party and then let's go to this night party or like let's go to this dinner. Then let's go out afterwards and let's go to the after. It's like I feel like I got one in me. I feel like I'd be redefining my life. If I I think I've gone out on a holiday night before and I'm like, what am I doing? What am I doing here? I'd be looking at all the other (laughs) sad people looking at like you here too. (laughs) Yeah. Some I'm like, <laughs> I'm I like, think that I there is get, a personality type that has to be at the club, has to mm-hmm. be on the scene. I've I've hung out with a, a bunch of people who are just like, all right, what are we doing tonight? We got to do something. Mm-hmm. You know, what I mean, I can't. And and that's when it's weird. Like if I know about something going on, it'll be a consideration. But the whole let's look for something happening. Mm-hmm. I'm just too old now. Oh, too, too old, old at 33. Um, but yeah, I'm, I think a bad Thanksgiving to me would be something food related. Like mm-hmm. they were late on the food or some ingredients didn't come or like there have been times that the oven didn't fit the turkey we had. Mm-hmm. Just like little stuff like that. Well, that doesn't compare to the stories that we're going to be reading today. Grizzly. Grizzly stories. Gruesome. Grum. Horrible. What were you going to say, Grum? <laughs> I don't know what I was about to say. That's why I dragged on to like you know what my, change the word. The most exciting thing about this article is what the producers A and E man can they do true crime? Absolutely, yes. true crime like a muff. Are you ready for mine? So these are Thanksgiving family murders, mm-hmm. family murder stories. All right, I was just gonna it. hit them with the murder. But mm-hmm. I was just gonna hit them with it. What like a surprise? Uh-huh. Surprise murder. Uh. There's not a lot of grizzly tales that have no murder in it. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a, a grizzly story grizzly with a tales. happy ending. <laughs> okay. The Guy Family Thanksgiving, Knoxville, Tennessee, 2016. Knoxville. It started amicably. Great word. 28-year-old Baton Rouge resident Joel, Joel Michael Guy Jr. traveled from Baton Rouge, Louisiana, back home to Knoxville, Tennessee, where he reunited with his three sisters and their parents over turkey and stuffing. This guy's name was Michael Guy? Joel Michael Guy. Sounds made up. Yeah. Michael Guy. <laughs> At the end of the evening, the three daughters, who all lived in Tennessee, returned to their homes. Guy Jr. was left alone with his parents, Joel Guy Sr., 61, and Lisa Guy, 55. That's when the violence erupted. Damn. At some point between Thursday night and Monday afternoon, the Knox County Sheriff's Department claims Guy Jr. stabbed and dismembered his parents, Damn. then attempted to dissolve their bodies in a mix of drain cleaner, sewer cleaner, and hydrogen per- peroxide and bleach. After Thanksgiving? At some point between Thursday night and Monday afternoon. Mm-hmm. Oh. Guy Jr. was an undergraduate and still dependent on his parents for financial support. Family members told authorities that his parents intended to tell him of their plans to scale back the support over the Thanksgiving weekend. As of March 2017, Guy Jr. is being charged with two counts of first degree murder, two counts of abusing a corpse and two counts of felony murder. You can abuse the corpse that you created? No, no, no. 
yeah, you can. It's a it's it's a crime to mess with a dead body. But a dead body that you just killed? Yes. It's a crime to... I thought that was just all wrapped into murder. No. Murder is the act of killing someone. So if I kill somebody and chop their finger off, I'll get another count of messing with the dead body? Abuse of a corpse. Wow. Hmm. That's crazy. Um, He has no history of mental illness and no prior criminal record. Gales says that that shame around the money likely played a larger role in the killing than the money itself. The conversation had a lot more than we're not paying your phone bill. He says, I suspect there was a shaming component to it and that triggered his behavior. If you dig into the psychology of family violence, the more common underlying psychological factor is shame. As of the original publication of this article, Guy Jr. remains in jail in lieu of a $2 million bond. His next court date is November 30th, 2017. Update as of 2018, Guy Jr. is still in jail and his next court date is on December 3rd, 2018. This nigga might be out. He ain't getting out. (laughs) (laughs) So crazy part to me is like the logical step by step like he was what in college undergrad which is somebody with plans Mm -hmm. he got cut off essentially and i don't like how the cop tried to make it seem like i think the parents were shaming him what (laughs) i have an update oh go ahead he is serving a 106 year sentence that's 50 years per parent mm -hmm, white pill Whiteville, Tennessee prison. I'm sure the daughter, the sisters are so confused. Like, what happened? We just right. left. That's insane. So I wonder what the conversation truly was. Doesn't Is it worth cutting you off? It no, could have been, be th- you that'd... broke bitch. You, you ain't never been shit. You're cut off. That doesn't mean murder and dissolve no, them in acid. I'm not making any type of excuse for him. I'm just saying I'm wondering what the conversation was that enraged him to the point where he felt he needed to do that. Especially since this is where I get tripped up in the logic. The anger came from, damn, you're not going to help me fulfill my dream, which doesn't typically lead to just, well, I'll kill you then. Because, like, what do you think was going to happen? <laughs> right. So how are you going to reach your dream now after you killed them? Right. You just made and your problems three times worse. Well, he did try to cover it up. With the acid. So, yeah, with the acid, acid But bleach, now you're, you're juggling cleaner. making more money and, and, and a new job and dodging a murder case. Like, because I'm assuming in his head, he's like, I mean, if I dissolve them in acid, no one will know. But now I'm on the run of what happened to my parents, adding more stress instead of just taking my ass home and figuring out this next step. They say no prior, like, psych profile, pretty much. I don't but, think he's regular. Uh, right. And I just wonder, like, what really happened? What really happened? Well, like, what was really the relationship between him and his parents? He's the only boy. Right, he had three sisters, right? You think there's deeper onion layers? I think it could be. I, I usually think there is when there's like, there's a smoking gun and then everything else. Like, there's no smoking gun in this outside of they told him they was going to pretty much limit the support they were giving him. Right. But what led up to, there had to be something growing up. There just has to be a if relationship it was just a murder, problem. Then maybe. If it was just a random murder, then maybe. I think him dismembering and dissolving them in acid leads to some like, oh, you crazy. That, that to me, puts less on the parents themselves. If he had just killed See, them and been like, oh, fuck, I fucked up. Right. That's one thing. I'm not, putting, I'm not necessarily putting anything on the parents, but I just wonder what happened in childhood. Where, what was the breakdown in the relationship? Not to say it was a parent's fault or his fault or what. Where mm-hmm. was the breakdown in the relationship for him to feel like doing something so permanent as murder to the people who raised him and was supporting him? Like, Some people are just crazy. Is it just like, I don't know what I'm going to do now? You know? Because it could have been like, 
supportive, blah, blah, blah. But they're just like, man, we ain't got it anymore. And he was just like, nah. you know, like that. I feel like that does happen. You know, the, mm-hmm. I, I feel like the 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 puzzle piece we want is like they were abusive. They did this to him. They put him in, you know, all these crazy things. But then it's like they did all that and then supported his college. Like right. <laughs> it's like it just it just oh. doesn't. Wonder, with the information we have. I wonder if he had some sinister sinister interests that his parents found out about and talked to him about and said, we Maybe. cannot support this. We are Maybe they found the you. acid and the, the knife and the bone saw and they're like, what is this? And he was just like, right. funny you say that. <laughs> <laughs> so, this was for you. I don't know. It, it's, it's pretty gruesome, pretty gory. Um, I like that. Well, I don't like it, but I mean, if you clicked on this, that was a good one. The Guy Family. Mm-hmm. Luckily, it's a Guy Family. You know what? Don't do it. All right. Next grisly Thanksgiving murder. The Mahari Jebreselesi <laughs> family. This shit is a lot of syllables. <laughs> so uh, let's let's hyphenate it. What are we going the Mahari family Thanksgiving. There it is. This was in Oakland, California in 2006. Talk about trouble with in-laws. Yikes. A long simmering tension between two Eritrean families joined by marriage ended with a triple murder and a sibling pair in prison for first degree murder. They celebrate Thanksgiving in Eritrea? Maybe these are Eritrean American. Well, they're in, it's o- Oakland. Oh, okay. So, you know, same way we celebrate it. celebrate. <clears throat> we be jumping in. Other, you know, I, be, I be celebrating Cinco de Mayo, all that, you know. <laughs> As Maram and Tuodros, <laughs> these are people's names. Right. As Maram and Tuodros, Jebri Slasi, <laughs> Jebri Slasi. This is about to be the highlight of your this story. This is going to be tough. 53 and 44 were convicted in the killing of their sister-in-law, Winta Mahari, 28. Her mother, Regbi Barengasi, 50, and her brother, Jonas Mahari, who's 17, at the Mahari Thanksgiving. Wow. The brothers were two of 11 siblings who had immigrated to Oakland. They erroneously believed that Winta had killed her husband, their brother, Abraham Jebri Slasi earlier in the year. I am struggling <laughs> with these names. Sorry, any Eritrean uh, people watching this. I am struggling. Uh, so they these brothers think that Winta, their sister-in-law, killed her husband, which is their brother, mm-hmm. earlier in the year to gain access to his five hundred thousand dollar life insurance policy. It's okay. getting a little getting a little okay. juicy. A pathologist determined that Abraham had died of natural causes. Okay. So that there goes that. Uh oh. No, I don't. I, I'm 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 trying to figure it out with you. Oh. So. So they did a private autopsy. J- joined by marriage. Tension starts. It says long simmering tension, but it says that it was earlier that year was the death. So maybe there was some crazy stuff going on before. Mm-hmm. All of a sudden, their brother dies. The the sister in law gets the five hundred thousand dollar life insurance policy. Pathologist says it was natural causes. Okay, but they think something's afoot. <laughs> Tuodros was invited to the Mahari Thanksgiving from where he contacted Asmarom and opened the door for him into the apartment back door. He then kidnapped their infant nephew oh my God. while his brother gunned down the others. What was the plan? Okay. One of them was invited. They were like, bet. Backdoored the family, uh, let his brother in. His brother shot Winta, her mom, and her brother, and they stole the infant nephew. What? The brothers were found guilty in 2011 and sentenced to life in prison without the possibility of parole. In 2016, Tuodros was released from prison after having his conviction overthrown and his prison sentence revised. Wow. That was four years later. The Mah- Are they saying that he had no he had nothing to do with it? He pleaded out? Like did he Conviction overthrown and his prison sentence revised. I don't, I don't know what that meant, but he got he got out very s- soon after. This murder happened 
Well, he was found guilty in 2011. I thought oh, the wow. murder happened in 20, 2006. He got out in 10 years. Wow. That is crazy. They killed the whole family. Right. They killed the sister-in-law, her mama, and her brother, and then stole the baby. Which is wow. kind of crazy after the pathologist said that uh, it was natural causes. What? How can you kill somebody and have it s seem like natural causes? That seems poison. like poison or um, what's the anesthesi anesthesia? That's, that's still, yeah. The, um, that would make you have a heart attack, right? Or your heart stop? If they put too much in you, if you shoot in them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's crazy. Mm -hmm. So... I mean, but what was, what was the problem? So they thought that she killed the brother. Mm -hmm. So they came and killed her. Which and is crazy. members of her family? Yeah, which is crazy because there was 11 siblings, tension between the two families. She invited one brother, which is kind of interesting if... The only connection to 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 this brother is the dead husband, and it seems like if you think they killed the husband, like don't invite them. So maybe he was the one that was like, I don't think you did it. Like the you trusting know, the, one, the one that I mean, was she, like I'm gonna gain her trust, and then we gonna get up in there and t he handle. He was the only one invited. Yeah, we gonna handle everything, but, and he backdoored, so he was setting her up. I wonder if there was other people in the family at the table like did they just come in bussing and there were right. survivors or you know what i mean like well they specifically meant to kill her right yeah for sure but they triple triple homicide and i guess the guy who backdoored uh them got out the person who shot all three of them is still in there god you really gotta you really gotta like watch who you deal with these days like mm -hmm. you can't just like that should be baffling me when i be seeing like fine ass like fine ass mug shots of dudes in prison for for rape or some shit i'd be like what that's what's going on you in their know? head that's how they program i'd be like damn you look good but fuck jesus you're a horrid horrible person yeah, you never know what somebody's and this the degrees of separation go too far out because even if you're dealing with somebody decent they could be immediately tied mm -hmm. to a crazy ass person like them stories you see of like you know, a boyfriend of one week gets murdered by the ex-boyfriend mm -hmm. because he was crazy as hell, that kind of shit. But I, I only said that to say because I know what people would say. I know rape is not about looks. It's about power and control and domination and right. shit like that. You know, really power. Right. So I know it don't have nothing to do with fine. looks. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> I know it don't have nothing to do with looks. I specialized in that shit when I worked with sex offenders. That's what I'm saying. Um, it's all about what's going on in their head. But yeah, like it's crazy. But I only said good looking people because that's what everybody goes after. You know what I'm saying? So when you see like when you deal with somebody that's like good looking but like just fucking bat shit crazy, it's like damn like mm. <laughs> yeah i mean you just craziness. really gotta watch who you deal with craziness reaches everybody mm -hmm. um you got this third story yes you uh you you had enough trouble with that last name that yeah, them names i'm, a, I'm gonna go ahead me. and take care of this one but this name is not easy to the merhij family thanksgiving Jupiter, Florida, 2009. Not Juniper? Jupiter. There's a Jupiter, Florida? Jupiter, Florida. Hmm. You know it? Yep. Put some balm on them ashy lips. Yeah. <laughs> After dinner, they played Christmas songs around an old upright piano. Then came the carnage. I've been waiting 20 years to do this, 35-year-old Paul Merhige was, was heard muttering as he gunned down 
four and injured two others at a cousin's family home. He in said, Jupiter, I've been Florida. waiting for this while he was I've shooting. I've been waiting 20 years to do this. And he's 35. So since he was a teenager, since he was 15, he never got out of that. Like 20 years, you're still in the same mindset, have the same fantasies that you wanted to do when you were a teenager. And now you're That's a grown crazy. ass adult. Like what the hell is he going on? waited for on everybody here? to come together on Thanksgiving like a hood funeral. Right. It's, it's crazy. crazy. Among the dead, his 76 year old aunt, Raymond Joseph, his 33 year old twin sisters, Carla Merhige and Lisa Knight, who was pregnant, and six year old Michaela Sitton. He shot the kids? The six nigga, year old Michaela Sitton. He wasn't Sitton. alive back in 20 years right, ago. He ain't been waiting 20 years to kill a six year old. Maybe he's wanted to kill the daughter of. Whoever. So name the Matter. victims again. Auntie, two sisters. Um, auntie, two sisters, one pregnant, six-year-old. Um, Michaela Sinton was the daughter of his cousin who was shot three times from her bed. Paul's presence at the dinner had been a surprise. He'd been estranged from his family for years, and at one point of his sisters putting a restraining order against him, but after purchasing more than $2,000 worth of guns and ammunition in the weeks before the holiday, he called his parents and asked to come to Thanksgiving. I hope he doesn't come and kill us all tonight, his mother Carol had told his sister Lisa Knight as they were preparing for dinner. What the hell? It came to my mind, replied the daughter, but don't say that to dad. In 2011, Paul Marhish pleaded guilty to all of the murders and received a sentence of seven life terms. He avoided the death penalty with his plea deal. Gales, the same person from the other, says Marhish likely suffered from borderline personality disorder. <laughs> and that estranged family members who return to kill often do so after failing to move on independently. The betting line is there's been a series of stressful events that led him to be estranged from his family, and if he came back with the intent of killing, it's because of his inability to self-soothe these grievances. Borderlines cannot self-soothe with their self-esteem when their self-esteem has been attacked. But for those left unsettled by the seemingly arbitrary nature of the family killings, they're not entirely random. Social isolation, low socioeconomic status, and youth all correlate with family violence, either because life circumstances have changed or the consequences do, but people tend to mature out of their violent behavior. For those eating Thanksgiving with older relatives, there's one more thing to be thankful for this year. And I guess that's having a life. That story was all over the place. I, I, I can't even follow. Like, so he said he's because, I mean, the first thing you think is abuse. Mm -hmm. If he says, I've been waiting 20 years to do this since I was 15. It's just like, oh, damn, maybe they did something to him. But who he hit was so random. Clearly, he had something with his sisters. Mm -hmm. But he killed, what, two kids that had nothing to do with. Right. And an unborn baby. I'm going to say this. I'm going to I'm going to describe what borderline personality disorder is so that it might make a little sense. OK. Um, it's also known as emotionally unstable personality disorder It's a personality disorder characterized by a long term pattern of unstable interpersonal relationships, a distorted sense of self and a strong emotional reaction. Those affected often engage in self-harm and other dangerous behaviors, often due to their difficulty with returning their, to their emotional level to a healthy or normal baseline. They may also struggle with feelings of emptiness, fear of abandonment, and detachment from reality. Symptom, symptoms of BPD may be triggered by events considered normal to others. BPD typically begins by early adulthood and occurs across a variety of situations. Substance use disorders, depression, and eating disorders are commonly associated with BPD. Some 8 to 10 percent of people affected by the disorder may die by suicide. The disorder is often stigmatized in both the media and psychiatric field and as a result is often underdiagnosed. So That's basically crazy. if you get if you have a borderline personality disorder attached mm -hmm. to you 
and there's a plethora of things that you do not qualify for especially when it comes to like career paths right stuff. yeah i mean uh, the, uh, the only thing that made me think oh was it abuse was you know he he said i've been waiting since i was a kid but the randomness of who he hit plus the sisters having taken out a restraining order on him so they already knew plus the mom saying something like i hope he doesn't come kill us all like that's that's a weird thing to say if you would be a, it's almost like was were they all in on it like oh man that the the part of the, the family member that we have that we abused hope he doesn't come get revenge like that's just a weird thing to say mm -hmm. unless he's been wild this whole year this, right this whole time because abuse would make it make sense right borderline personality sometimes doesn't necessarily make sense so it was like almost like you know? jokingly like man i hope he ch hope this ain't the year he just opens you know like no well like, i mean they they must have known his violent tendencies right you know so why they said don't say it because he's probably threatened them before yeah well there's the the uh what is it the restraining order mm -hmm. you know whatever happened that led up to that is probably he's probably said it they they may have found letters or documentations or text messages they may have found evidence to suggest that he was right. capable of picking them off that's that's terrible especially for the kids that had nothing to do with nothing that must right. be tough for the parents too they lost all their kids that day mm -hmm. and uh, uh, the grandkid they're about to have ugh, that's rough it's tough it's 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 really sad too because i mean if he was estranged you know that means that they probably the parents probably put a stop to him coming around and that's why he called know. and was like can right I can i come week? but he was just coming to wreak havoc that's so crazy on and he did it on thanksgiving which Day, is like which is like i really wanna stick my knife in your turkey and you and you really ruined that holiday for everybody who survives too there's yeah. no it's a wrap on that holiday like would, now it's it's morning places, houses yeah. everybody else was a guest there and they could have not they probably even had conversations about not going maybe right no one tells no one i'm sure no new parent knows that one of your kids could kill the rest of them that's this, fucking insane right this reminds me of the purge oh shit you remember the purge no when she when they all went to uh the lady's house and he was drinking wine she was flirting with the sister's husband on purge night and they thought they were safe and all of a sudden the sister came out dumping on the other sister oh that's right and then just shooting up at the that place. random apartment mm -hmm, that they were at mm -hmm. right this is this sounds like a scene like there was guests there like waiting for a holiday like, some cold shit up, you know that's some so cold shit. Great video. Great movie. Great ah. Movie. Great well, movie, I'm horrible gonna... story. What movie was great? The Purge. Ah, okay. I just need to clip that. I, I already said that I like the movie. Oh. I've, I've been public about my being a fan of the series now. <laughs> I, just, I just haven't really. Uh... Well, good. I'm glad you reiterated it. Yeah. Good, good story though. Very good story. Very sad. Yes. Rest in peace to everybody who I lost know. their life that day. 